Hey guys, Mr. Preacher Man 75 back with you, and this I think will be the final segment in my Tips for New Gun Buyers series. Um, we've previously talked about the three different um, purposes and three different purposes of use for handguns that new that new gun buyers may have, um, and gave you some suggestions about what you might want to look at in terms of uh, calibers and even specific makes and models of guns that might fit into uh, uh, that category for you. Um, so hopefully somebody out there has found that uh, helpful. For this segment, I want to talk about uh, gun shops. And um, I am pretty fortunate where I live, I think, because I, my local gun shop is a really good gun shop. Um, they're not the biggest. They don't have the best selection. But uh, their prices I found to be as good as anywhere else out there. Um, they're, they're friendly. They're knowledgeable. And... Uh, they're just good to deal with, and so I'm pretty lucky in that manner. And I know, I realize, and this is just kind of to uh, to start off with this caveat. I realize that everybody else out there, um, that's not going to be the situation for everybody. So, so take that. I, I do take that into consideration when I give you these tips. But um, I wanted to do this segment because when I first started looking uh, for guns, I did a lot of research online, and that's you know hopefully. I assume if you're watching this video, you're probably doing the same. But um, it's one thing to uh, to look online, and you can look around at the different guns, sh or gun prices, and uh, makes and models and things like that. But it it can almost be intimidating sometimes if you don't know a whole lot about guns to uh, to go into a gun shop, and uh, you know it's unfamiliar surroundings, and it's not necessarily that you're afraid of guns or anything like that, but uh, sometimes just having a conversation with uh, with somebody when when you obviously don't know uh, what you're talking about um, can can be a little bit intimidating, uh, and some people would avoid that altogether. And um, I realize that with the ability to to purchase guns online now, that you don't really even have to do that. But I'm going to recommend that. Uh, if you have the ability, if it's avail if you have the availability of gun stores in your area, that that you go in and that you find a local gun dealer in your area to deal with. Uh, keep in mind there may be more than one, and I'll, I'll talk about that in just a minute as well. But um, I think it's very important that if if at all possible that that we do support our local um, economy and our local gun dealers. Um, when it makes sense. Uh, now, I wouldn't suggest that you overpay for a gun just to to help the guy help a local shop out. Um, but there's a lot of things to take into consideration when you're when you're buying a gun online. Even um, things like FFL transfer fees and shipping fees and things like that that sometimes uh, will give a local dealer an advantage. Um, so the first thing you want to look for in a gun shop is that it's local. Um, a lot of times, especially if you're going to get into guns and shooting and buy more than one gun, um, there there can be an advantage to uh, dealing with one dealer. Um, get to know them; they'll get to know you. Um, and when they see that you're a repeat customer, a lot of times that they'll go out of their way to uh, to help you out. So, so finding a shop that is local um, can be can be a really good thing for you. Um, you want to find folks that are friendly. I've been in gun shops that are not friendly, and it seems silly to say that, but um, if, if you spend very much time uh, looking at video, watching videos online or, or what have you, and, or reading blogs, you'll hear the term gun snob. And I've been in gun shops where the guys behind the counter are definitely gun snobs. In other words, they, they have their specific brands that they're, that they're willing to talk about, um, and, and if you're not going to buy a gun that's in the appropriate price point, they're, uh, they're not going to be much help to you. Um, and, you know, I don't have much use for that. So um, find a local gun shop. Find, find a shop that, that has, uh, has a staff that's going to be friendly and helpful uh, and knowledgeable. You want people that know what they're talking about. Um, I've been very surprised over the last few years as I've gotten more into um, – shooting and, and guns and just the uh, the community aspect of things, how many people that you would think 
would know about guns and be knowledgeable that are not. Uh, for example, police officers, uh, because they're the most visible people out there um, in our local communities that carry guns, you might assume that they know um, a lot about firearms, and that's just not always the case. Now, some of them are very knowledgeable. I'm not saying that that's all that this always applies, but there are some of them out there that carry their gun because it's part of their job. Um, they train with it enough to qualify, but they're just not really into guns, and uh, so, so you'll find that even in gun shops as well. I mean, people need jobs and if, um, a sales clerk at a gun, gun counter is available, uh, you might find that, that the person behind the counter doesn't really know what they're talking about. Uh, also there's lots of different kinds of guns. And so you might get into a shop where hunting is the big thing. And the guys behind the counter may know a lot about shotguns, but may not know a lot about handguns. Um, and so, uh, you should be able to tell pretty quickly, um, whether the person you're dealing with behind the counter has has knowledge about the uh, the guns that you're talking to them about, and if if there's any questions, just ask them. Ask them, have you shot this gun? Have you handled this? Do you do you know about this or that? And uh, hopefully they'll be honest enough with you to tell you um, if they don't have experience to to own up to that. But um, you do want friendly and knowledgeable staff, and that you know it, it almost seems silly to say that because you would be looking for that. Anywhere, I mean, if you're going to buy a car, you would want a friendly, knowledgeable staff. Um, but a lot of times with, with guns, I think we th we make exceptions because um, there's not nearly as many gun shops out there as there are car dealerships. And so you would be kind of limited maybe, especially depending on where you live, in uh, the availability of, of the product. Um, I would steer you away from big shops like um, Bass Pro Shop or Cabela's or things like that. Um, I don't have a Cabela's around me. I can't speak specifically to that, but um, we have a, we have one of the Bass Pro Superstores uh, near us, and I've spent a good time there, a good bit of time there. And the guys there are friendly enough, but um, they're Bass Pro employees. They're not necessarily handgun uh, enthusiasts. Um, and the prices at those places are generally higher too. Um, so, so just watch out for that. And I, I've had my best luck at smaller local shops. And so, um, that's, if I were going to give advice, which that's what these, uh, videos are about, um, I would advise to, uh, to find a nice local shop where you can get to know the people that are behind the counter and, uh, you know, kind of form even a, a little bit of a relationship with those guys. Um, so that you, you can trust them to advise you on, um, on your purchase. Uh, prices obviously are going to be, is going to be a key to anybody. You don't want to walk into a store and, uh, you know, you might walk into a store and see friendly guys and they might really know what they're talking about, but then you look in the counter or in the cabinet and see that their guns are $75 higher than, uh, the guns that you've seen online or uh, even in other shops. So price, obviously, you do want to take into consideration. And you'll see a wide array of prices if you go from shop to shop. Um, and that's absolutely 100% markup. Um, there, there's no reason that one gun dealer needs to be higher than the other except that he wants to make more profit. And, you know, they're in business, and that's their prerogative to do that. But uh, generally speaking, the uh, the dealer controls the prices, and so um, if you see somebody that's just out of uh, out of proportion with what you think it ought to be, um, try somewhere else. Uh, if they were going to get a, a discount on volume, you would assume that somewhere like Bass Pro or Cabela's would have the best prices, and they don't. They're they're high usually on uh, everything that I've priced them at. So, um, so there's not necessarily a, a uh, they don't get a better, a better deal on volume. They don't give you a better deal. So, um, so check out the prices and it, it always helps to be knowledgeable when you go in and you know what you're looking for and what it should be priced at. And, and you can do those price comparisons online before you go in. I mean, you should have a ballpark idea of what you're going to, what you are going to pay for a certain type of gun. But, it also helps a lot to be able to go in and actually handle the gun. And in most gun shops, they will let you handle the gun. And if you've got, if you go into a shop and they say, oh, I'm sorry, we can't take the guns out for you. 
that would kind of be a red flag to me to say, I, I don't know what these guys are doing. Uh, you know, there's no reason that, that they shouldn't let you, uh, that they shouldn't let you handle a gun because you want to see how it feels in your hand. And I, some of them aren't going to let you dry fire the guns. And I think that's okay. Um, some of them will let you dry fire the guns and that's even better, but, um, they, they should at least let you, uh, let you hold the gun and see how it feels in your hand. And, uh, you know, those are, those are the types of things that you should ask for, uh, when, uh, when you go into a gun shop, um, look around, see if they sell used guns. Uh, the gun shop, my local shop that I deal with the most, um, they actually close on Saturdays, uh, during the summer, especially because they go to gun shows on Saturdays. And so if you go into them, um, if you go in the next day that they're open, they'll usually have a cabinet full of used guns that they've traded for or bought while they were at the gun show. Um, and you can get some really good deals on used guns. So, uh, you know, that's something else that you might look for in, in your local gun shop. Do they have used guns? Do they deal in that? Will they take a trade? Now, obviously, if you're buying your first gun, you may not have a gun to trade, and that's fine. Um, but if you go back, you might want to trade your first gun in and step up or something like that. That's exactly what I did. I bought a really cheap gun for my first gun. Once I decided that I was going to be more serious about shooting, I took it back to them and said, hey, can I trade this on something else? And they said, absolutely. And they actually gave me more on trade because I bought the gun from them in the first place than they would have otherwise. Um, so, uh, so those are just some things to take into account as you're looking for, a, as you're looking for your first gun and you're looking to uh, buy a gun at a local gun shop. Um, some red flags you might look at um, is upselling. In other words, if you go in and tell them what your price point is and ask for their recommendations and they're showing you guns that are $100 more than what you wanted uh, to spend, you know, that would be a red flag to me that maybe they're not trying to be helpful, but they're just trying to sell you something. Um, you know, I understand their job is sales. They're trying to make money, but at the same time, they, they should be willing to help you out. Um, and as long as you're being reasonable about what you want to spend, I mean, you're not going in and say, I got 50 bucks. What have you got? Um, as long as you're reasonable in what you are looking for, they should be able to help you in whatever price point you choose. Um, this is kind of a nut and fancy term, I think, but he called, he talks about being brand myopic. Uh, in other words, being stuck on one specific brand of gun, uh, whether it be, um, you'll see, see or hear a lot about people that are really stuck on Glock, for example. I, I'm not a Glock guy. I don't have a Glock. I, I don't particularly ever want a Glock. It's not that they're not good. It's just, I think that they're kind of overrated personally, um, for the money. Uh, not they're fine, fine guns. Don't get me wrong. I'm going to get all the Glock people mad at me. Glocks are fine guns. Um, but there are lots of other choices out there. So don't go with somebody that's only going to be stuck on selling you one particular thing. Glocks and SIGs are fantastic guns, but Ruger makes some really good guns too. And usually the Ruger guns are priced about a hundred to $200 less than the Glocks and the SIGs. Um, and so if, uh, if you've got, got a dealer that's stuck on, um, one brand in particular, uh, 1911 guys, Kimber is another one that, that is a really big brand and Kimber makes some excellent guns, but Kimber, Kimber is not the only manufacturer out there. So, uh, you want somebody, if they're going to, if they're giving you suggestions that, that will be, uh, open-minded to more than just one, uh, gun manufacturer. Um, and then of course you want to watch out for, for, um, gouging and prices. Um, unfortunately, Another one of my local gun shops does that, and you know they've had some really some nice, knowledgeable guys working in there. But the owner is the one that sets the prices, and um, you can walk into his shop, and he'll have. And this is no lie. This is this is my actual experience. Um, we'll take the Ruger LC9 for example. Um, he has an, a Ruger LC9 in his case, and the price on that is about five is five hundred dollars. Uh, now, if you've done any kind of price shopping, you know that that's about $100 to $150 high for the Ruger LC9. $350 is about the price you should be paying for an LC9. He also gets his guns from Davidson's, gallery, from Davidson's um, gallery of guns. And so if you go online, you can go to Davidson's gallery of guns, look up the Ruger LC9, and get a price quote on it, and it will show on his shop 
that he will sell that gun to you for $420. And that's out the door. That's his outdoor, out the door price through Davidson's. So there's an $80 disparity between the gun and the case and the gun that you can buy from him online. Um, and that's 100% purely his markup. That's just because he knows that he's the only gun shop in the little town where he is and he doesn't have any competition and people will come and buy the gun from him and so he marks it up. And so if you, if you run into somebody that has just blatantly raked their prices up, um, just stay away from them. In those situations, I would, I would recommend buying it online. If, you, if that's the only gun shop you have access to, um, just order it online. You don't want to support that, uh, that kind of, I don't know, dirty capitalism, I guess. I don't know what you want to call it. Um, but for every one guy, one of those shops, I think there's probably two or three that are run by good, solid um, members of the gun community that, you know, they're going to make their profit and they, un they understand that and you understand that, but they're not going to rake you over the coals about it. So anyway, those are just some things to think about. Um, don't be afraid to go in and talk to the guys. Don't be afraid to ask them questions. They should be knowledgeable and they should be able to answer your questions. And if they can't, um, that should be a red flag to you as well. Um, and in most places you can even ask for a better price. You know, they may have, they're going to have some flexibility, especially if you're dealing with the owner of the shop himself, if it's a smaller shop, they'll have some flexibility in price. And so you may be able to get a better deal or work a deal. Um, a lot of the places have layaway systems. So if you don't have the money on you right there, you can put something down and come back and make payments on it until, uh, until it's paid off. Uh, some, some really great things to think about. Um, this video is long and it's, I don't even know if it'll let me upload it all, but anyway, hopefully it's helpful to you. And this is Mr. Preacher Man 75, uh, closing out my first tips for gun buyers. We'll talk to you later.